Hello. Oh, it's working already. Hello, everybody. I'm Nuno Curtisão. I'm the, one of the co-founders and CEO of Zartan. And today I came here to do a presentation about NFT financialization and how we can leverage the NFTs that we have to make most and more of them. It's a very initial uh, presentation. I will not overcomplify. Uh, over but it's going to be interesting. And so I start by showcasing these checks because it's the French flag and it's the NFT Paris, so uh, I found it funny. But in reality, I don't know if you guys have minted, but how many opportunities have you have already lost? Things that you knew that were going to explode, an opportunity that was right on time, but at the moment you didn't have the funds, You where your wallet was not prepped. And instead of just minting one asset, you could mint a few at the time. The opportunity was fantastic. And so these are the mints that sometimes you want, but this is the wallet that sometimes we have. It doesn't have any liquidity, and we can't take the step to the opportunities that we are identifying and for the things that we love. But this is also the wallet that you have not only the part that you are already completely into the NFT space, you have all the assets there, but you don't have any kind of liquidity. And so why are, you, are we missing opportunities? Because if we have a board ape or other asset, any asset that makes sense, that you love, that has intrinsic value, that the community loves, uh, and you need liquidity, you don't have too many opportunities right now. Because in reality, or you sell the, that asset, and then you, in reality, you are getting liquidity, but maybe you are getting out of the community that you love. You are losing the potential upside. If you believe on that NFT, it's going to grow with value in the future. And it doesn't make much sense. But if you hold, you also don't solve the problem because you continue with your wallet without any kind of funds. And so borrow and credit was invented a long time ago. And now is the phase where we have to push and create a primitive financial ecosystem so that we can start building more use cases for the NFT community, for the space. And so I came here with a very uh, NFT lending 101. And I have no idea if you are aware of the amount of solutions that are popping. The NFT space, as digital assets, we have cryptocurrencies on the other side, and then we have all these opportunities, all these companies that are building tools to leverage and to make us more efficient so that you can explore the opportunities. And so I came to talk only about this small square that is very big in reality and give a glimpse on how things are going. So if you've never done a loan on the NFT space, don't feel bad because it's just starting now but it has already some traction. You are not going to be alone. It's not stupid. It's something that people are doing. Uh, the top platforms of NFT lending, the overall space has 40,000 people using uh, solutions. There are, in the last year, it was performed more than $500 million in loans using NFT lending. And so this is a space that is booming. You can see the curves. We are on a all time high because in bull market, there is more opportunities to explore. In bear market, there is a more a need to be financial savvy, financial efficient, and ensure that the assets that we have in our, our own uh, wallets don't stay there, getting dust, not working for us. And so I'm here with the questions or the base questions that you have to ask to, so that you can become an NFT lending expert. And so, my, and to understand from the different platforms that exist on, on the space, what should be your decision? Because each one of you will have different levels of knowledge on, on finance, different levels of knowledge on NFTs, and different levels of knowledge of the needs that you need. Uh, the, the opportunities that you want to explore are completely different. And all of these solutions are trying to fill the gap and serve different customers. And so my first question is, why should someone give me a loan when I have an NFT? And 
this makes perfect sense. We like we are buying houses, and the bank doesn't give us a, a loan just because of our pretty eyes. They can give us some money if if we need and collateralize. Like they will if you are on a, if if you if you if you need some 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 funds. But if you really need liquidity, traditional bank will give you a a, a loan because they will use the house that you are buying as a guarantee, as a collateral that supports and mitigates the risk for the lender. And the same happens with the NFT space. If you have an NFT asset, a lender is okay in providing you a loan if you use the asset as an underlying collateral. And so this will create a fair offer in the space because you know that you need cash or funds to do and explore your opportunities, but the lender on the other side will know that if you fail to pay, and that can happen, okay, it's, it, it, sometimes it, it happens, uh, is protected and it can ensure that what is doing, it has a level of risk that is being mitigated. And this leads to a concept that is critical on the space, and that is a loan to value. And so what's a loan to value? Is the value between the loan that you are requesting the money that you are going to receive on that uh, on that operation, and the asset that you have to support the the loan that you are asking, and so the LTV is the relationship between the the asset that you are using and the loan that you are going to receive, and so this is typically a question when majority of people go to um, NFT lending platforms, they plug their assets, they are super. Uh, knowledgeable on pricing and they see a value that for example on this board ape you would have uh, a, seven, a 70 it uh, pricing for the assets but you will receive a 50 it loan it's lower than the value of your underlying asset but that makes sense because in reality you are only providing a support or a solution to to the, to the lenders to so that they are in safe so that they can provide you a loan. In reality, you are not selling the asset to the lender. That's not the, the target. It can be, but typically that's not the target. And so that's the reason why these concepts arise, is to understand how much liquidity you can unlock from, from the funds that you have. Then it comes the second question. Where will be my NFT? Because we are used to have the, wall, uh, the, the asset on our MetaMask, on our wallet, but when we are performing the loan, there are different solutions for this. Some platforms will require you to transfer the asset to the platform, custodial side, similar to a bank, uh, Binance, and the uh, next to do it, so it's, it's the, the offer that they give you. Then we have another, another option that is smart contracts. So a smart contract that has all the business rules, you know that you, everything that you are going to do is protected by the rules of the smart contract, but the asset is going to leave your wallet. And then the last mm, solution is your asset is on your wallet, but you get the loan. Because in case you are not able to pay, the smart contract that is enabling the loan has the capability to take the asset outside of your wallet. As per today, the majority, and I would say that like almost no solution performs the last one. That's the, the holy grail for NFT lending. But the NFT is the standard, the baseline standard, uh, 721. It's very complex to, to achieve this. And so a very big chunk and the majority of DeFi solutions lay on the middle. They build a smart contract. You transfer the asset to the smart contract. You get the funds. When you repay your loan, you get your asset back. Then it comes the part on who is going to give me a loan? Okay, we are asking a loan with our digital objects and we are not asking a loan against the bank that is mm, traditional. Uh, and so there are two major places or two major uh, equations to perform a loan using NFTs as collaterals. Or you do a peer-to-peer, -peer, similar to uh, any marketplace. You request a loan, you set the terms, and somebody will go there, will understand the risk and will fulfill the loan. This is a peer-to-peer -peer model. It has advantage. If you have time, probably you will get like the best of the best uh, opportunity because you will receive lots of opportunities and you can cherry pick. But typically when you are in need for a loan, you need money right now. And so if you are on a hurry, if you want to explore an arbitrage, if you want to, to do a flipping, 
maybe the solution is not a peer-to-peer -peer because it will take too much time for you to get the funds. And then the peer-to-pool comes. It's a different model where you request a loan, but several users connect together on a DeFi pool. So basically, they, it's kind of a syndicate. They chip all the money or all the funds into a pool. The, money are, uh, the funds are always available, and when you request a loan, the funds are used directly from that pool. And so you can get instant loan on spot. And this is very powerful. If you identify a super opportunity, you have one hour to mint, you go there, you request a loan, probably you'll do the mint, two days after you already paid the loan, and it, was, it, it enabled you to achieve something that you could never do if that, this was not the path. Then we come to paying. Interest rates is always a, a problem. Nobody likes to pay. But so there are three types of interest. Uh, there are three types of um, interest rates uh, on, on this space. Or you have a fixed interest. So you perform a loan, you request a loan, uh, and you subscribe for a maturity, like 90 days, 100 days, and you know that you are going to pay the full amount for all the days that you are on the loan. Then you have the solutions that are called margin solutions, mar margin loans. So um, um, a solution that applies that, for example, is Vendal, where you request a loan, you use your asset, but you don't define the days that you are going to use. And so you are getting built every day, uh, and that is very useful when you are a very big pro trader. The thing on those kind of loans is that out of the blue, you can be liquidated if you don't know what you are doing because you are requesting a loan, you can't plan when you are going to repay, and basically if there is a swing on the asset value, you are going to get your assets arrested to repay the loan. And so it's the type of solutions that work very well for a specific niche of users. And then last, we have peer-to-pool solutions with ProRata uh, where the users can request a loan. They subscribe a maturity. They can prepare and plan whatever they want to, to the loan. But if they pay early, because sometimes we were planning to do a loan of uh, 90 days, one month, two months, but after one week, we are okay. We have already explored the opportunity that we want. We repay, and you don't pay for the full period that you have subscribed. You only pay for what you were uh, using. And so uh, I'm from Zarte, and we are one of the platforms in the space. And I don't want to, to, to bother you too much, but in reality, we are one of the most borrower-friendly solutions. We are a maturity peer-to-pool solution, solution that runs on DeFi. The users can select the amount of time that they want to do the loan. They, it's super flexible. You can select the amount of capital that you want to unlock and then you have different rules on pricing, on duration, but it's very easy to perceive because we focused a lot on doing this very customized for the users. And my, my slide is cut, but we also have liquidation protection because the majority of mm, holders, they are in love for their NFTs and it's never cool to get liquidated out of the blue. So we ensure that even if you don't fulfill the, your loan until the end of the due date, we give you a 48 hour period so that you can go there and try to fulfill the loan. Um, and even, um, in, in, in you never get a margin call during the maturity of the loan. So during the period of the loan you are safe, you know that your asset will not be taken out of the blue and that's something that we also provide. And so this is what I had to tell you. I hope that you can join us on Twitter or test our solution. Uh, it's live since uh, last month. We, we are a, a DeFi company that have been working in the space for the last year. We raised the four million round during the bear market and we are very excited to bring the, the solution that we are building with lots of love and care. And if you have any questions, I believe that we have two or three minutes happy to, to, to chat and take any questions that you have. And if you like this kind of concepts, I can do a, a V1.02 with shorts, options, puts, and a very more complex one, but this was just an introductory course just to give some ideas on what you can do with your NFTs. Don't let them on their wallets getting dust. You can make way more, uh, you can explore way more opportunities in the future with all of this. Thank you.
and if you have any question, happy to answer. I just wanted to add that uh, we have a booth over there, so <laughs> don't feel shy to, to to ask a question here in front of an audience. You can come to us later, get some T-shirts, get some notebooks, and we'll be happy to connect with you guys. <laughs> Thank you so much, and uh, hope that you have the rest of a good conference. Oh, there is a question. So it's uh, an engineering question. What yeah. standard are you using for loan uh, management in your smart contract? Okay. Can you repeat, sorry? What uh, standard? Ah, we, we, we build um, a proprietary, uh, proprietary, no, we build our own smart contracts, yeah. okay? We use a, a, a DeFi pool uh, and we got audit twice. The assets that we are accepting at the moment are RC7021 based on mainnet and we have on our documentation all the assets that are available. We focused first on some blue chip assets that are easier to profile regarding to risk, but now we are opening our collections to be more decentralized so that we can have um, emergent collections and we can sustain the majority of the ecosystem because the long tail has lots of value that people want to explore and uh, are, are not having solutions at the moment. But we build everything on Viper, the smart contract is public, the audits are public, and happy to, 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 to chat more about it. Okay, thank you. I will look at you, GitHub. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much.